Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. Recently I put out a couple of videos of going on a comic book crawl with some friends and I had a fantastic time. So much so I decided to do one of those today. But you can't go on a comic book crawl by yourself, you need to go with a friend. So who did I bring today? Fellow New Englander and comic book YouTuber Ricky from All Sorts of Words. How exciting is this? We're next to a highway and it's really hard for us to be heard on camera. I'm so excited. It's gonna be a fun day. We're at Nick's Comic Strip in Danvers, Massachusetts. What a great place to start. We know these guys pretty well. Let's go inside. See you inside! So Ricky's got this awesome camera already set up for some B footage. This is some seriously professional stuff. Cool. Where is he? There he is. I found so much. Yeah? Yeah, this is, uh, here, check this out. Um, a three issue series called Thin. Yeah. So like, obesity and horror. Yeah. This a complete cover buy. Oh, beautiful. But $10 for oh, one through yeah. five, and just, they're just gorgeous, gorgeous. covers. Yep. Um, I'm gonna read me some Sojourn issue prequel through 16 for $20. Yeah. Dumb. Um, crypto cover. Oh, of course. Ricky has crypto covers. You love them. Obsessed. Yep. And then uh, a couple of vampies. Oh, you like Vampirella? I didn't know that. It's a brand new Christmas cover. Oh, very Rudolph, nice. specifically. Oh, that's actually like tastefully done. Um, so I love it when they put her <laughs> in outfits that isn't her classic. Look at right. that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep, final show. Um, just a black yeah. and white cover, nice. I like it when she's different ages. Yep, oh yeah, that's definitely uh, geriatric. Yeah, she's yeah. a vampire. She doesn't age, right? And then uh, oh, a night hawks at the diner. Reference. That is fantastic. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah so oh, I'm doing good. Cool. Wow, I gotta start digging some I'm, more because I'm saying. Wow, it's awesome. Hey guys, I'm here with the owner Nick of Nick's Comic Strip. What's going on? Hello, how are you? I'm Good excellent. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. It's great. Awesome store. Thanks. I noticed you got new comic books in. We have a plethora of plasticky, <laughs> slabbed goodness, you know? Everything from 90s, 96s, 98s, everything in between. Was... What's your best deal on the wall? What's your best yeah. deal on the wall? What's the best deal uh, on the wall? The best deal you got. Well, you know that ice cream man, someone 96 sees... at 100, it's a gangster deal, but we already know someone's buying that. So. You know what I love? There's a $100, I think it's the itchy and scratchy one, 98 on the left. I think that book's only 100 bucks because I, I think The Simpsons number one is four. But to me, that's like a, that's a great that's a great buy. I don't know why, but like, you know, I don't know. Listen, I'm not the comic guy. I'm the toy guy. <laughs> He's, him and Oscar, they're the comic guys. I'm just a, a guy doing a thing that can't really read. Um, I mean, the Jake Scott Campbell Black Cat, that's a good one right there. Yeah. Uh, right I mean, in. even that 9-4 New Mutants is an awful. No, first you're gonna write it casually right next to it. Real quick, I'm gonna scare me a little bit. <laughs> like a ninja. It's first John Stewart sneaking over. 330 pound out. ninja. <laughs> That nine four secret was it's it's um, First affordable. Of you know what I mean? Show in comic books. It's a. I'm not a huge DC guy, but this book's on my list. That's a nice book. Yeah, it's, clean. it's actually a good price on it too. Bro, the only thing we have here is good prices. And wow. a points for award program. Oh, 
And yeah, okay. humble brag. And like, and this is humble like, brag. We give away free money. This is stop asking for discounts. This is please. not sponsored, but Slapped like, I made an account here like a long time ago, and every time I come in, they're like, "Oh, you had free money sitting here." So, so I've done videos about this place in the past. These guys are incredibly generous, and every right. April you See? guys do a special. Almost forgot the most important thing, <laughs> but it's important? not because it's like a. We don't even want to talk about it. Like we just want to do it, and like. We don't want people to think like, hey, you know. And that's what blew me away, like how quiet and humble you guys were about it. Like, oh, we're having- Until you ask. I tell you, you're yeah. having a you know, sale on all the back issues and you know, uh, proceeds were just casually going to like a charity of choice. So you guys are gonna be doing that again pretty soon. We are. So this month, I think in April, not March, but this upcoming April, we may do a back issue sale every weekend in April. So I'm assuming that's gonna be four, Friday and Saturday. So eight days total, according to my handy dandy wizard manager over here. So if the math's wrong, don't blame me. Um, but yeah, that's what we plan on doing. We don't know, we might do 50. Hell, we might do 70. We haven't even decided yet, watch out, you know? Right. Lock up your kids' college fund, we could do 80 on <laughs> on DC to empty them out. Maybe Marvel, who knows? And it's, it's going, going to a good cause, so you don't feel right. guilty about spending it. So. See, you can't if your wife says, I can't believe you're buying more comic books. You just gotta tell her, like, listen, it's charity. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> One, it's charity. Two, stop eating cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. All right, well, I'll be back definitely in April, man. Exciting. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot. So this is a very nice copy. It's a little bit of standing right there. The spine is really nice. That guy's really nice. Staples. Staples look good. Wow. What's going on? You know, that's a pretty good price. So, I just had one of the biggest purchases of my entire life the other day, and I said I was going to, for a while, not buy big books, but I've wanted this book for a long time, and I can't believe the price on this high grade copy. So, I'm really considering it. So, I said I wasn't going to spend money today, but. Here we go. Pretty, that. It's pretty awesome. Too gorgeous. Just tell them what you paid. Uh, 200 bucks for both of them with my reward points. So I basically got the first kilowatt 30, for free. Which means you got it for free. I got it for free and that's already an insanely good price. So you don't even have to come in like groveling for Not, discounts. I didn't have to ask for a discount at, at all. I'm yeah, pretty excited. You know? All right. Hey, I'm, I don't feel bad about it at all. I wouldn't Thanks either. a lot, guys. Always awesome. Always a pleasure to be here. Y'all come back now. Have a good day. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that was a pretty awesome place. You know, we uh, didn't think we'd start off that hot and strong, but man, we got a lot of stuff at that store. But great store, great people, uh, pretty happy with what we got. And uh, on to the next place. Yeah, $250 later. Yep. Hey, that means this is a good time. That's all. Agreed. All right, see you guys at the next place. We're heading to another flea market. Yeah. To get comic books. Because yeah. this, this is what our life has devolved into. This is it. Could be with people that we love. But we're with we, people we, we like. We are with people we love. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you like you went right for the hard. I went L. right for it. Hard L. I went for it. All right, guys, we are at our second location, which is Jeffrey's Antique Co-op Mall. Uh, I figure because you know I'm known for going for flea markets and stuff, this would be a great place to bring Ricky. And the last time I was here, there were a ton of books I knew he would love. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm freaking out. All I right. want to see. I want to see some old stuff. All right, there's old stuff in here. Let's go. go. All right, me and Ricky are on the hunt.
Yeah, so this is the first, uh, oh yeah. So this is the rack. Last time I got some pretty good books out of here. Pretty cool. Yeah, beautiful cover art too. The a little bit of Frasetta feel to it, huh? So the Barbie run is actually uh, all low print, all of it. All of it, right. I've had some chances to buy like the whole thing too and I passed on it. Hey, look at that, first uh, Jaime Reyes hiding in there. Uh, second print. Second print. Uh, DC is big on making their second prints red. Right. They do have one of those, but... See, this is a comic that my brother had that reminds uh -huh. me, like this is just like, I just have a weird connection. He's just such a, he just looks like a bro. He gets, so the whole issue is Hulk getting s slammed on by Spider-Man and then in, and in the end, he just claps his hands and Spider-Man oh, falls down. Of course, down. of course. So this is first Vulcan, who is, uh, yeah, the Summer's brother, Cyclops and Havoc's brother. It's five bucks. This is a special variant that actually shows him on the cover. This is also the series that really shows how much of a jerk Professor X is. Oh, absolutely grabbing that one. Uh, McDonald's glass, but I don't have the oh, Robin. Sweet. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> five bucks? Five bucks? Oh. Can't go wrong. You ever see this out in the wild right oh wow yeah why, the, why is this cool it comes with valentine's oh yeah that's pretty sweet literally oh it's adorable my love is more powerful than a locomotive that's amazing you're wonderful <laughs> but yeah i, I have nice. this in my um in my new 52 collection i have all of new 52 uh -huh. but like oh, it's cute. to have one that i can yeah. pack up and actually send to people oh, really yeah. nice. oh that's awesome let's see this is the issue with uh having them in these types of Antique place with shelves, people tip them forward and they get spine ticks. Otherwise, it'd be a good book. So we get some key issues I found in here. We got first Screaming Mimi, Songbird, also Titania. We got first Grave Digger. We got first formation of the uh, Infinity Stones. The problem is all these books are really bad shape. You know, I mean, they're cheap, you know, three, six, ten dollars, but I don't know. But it proves that you can find oh, these absolutely. books in the wild. It just might not be 90s. Exactly. No, you can find this stuff all over the place. It's just a matter of, hey, is it worth it? This one might be because it's cool. Great cover. Where is he? All right. So Ricky's got a big old bag, but I'm being good and only got one comic book. But uh, the day is still young. Ready for some lunch, Ricky? There you go. I can't show that on my channel. It's a kid's show. All right, we're gonna go have some lunch, guys, and then the uh, comic crawl continues. So there you go, guys. That was the beginning of my day with my friend Ricky from All Sorts of Words. I say the beginning of my day because just like the last comic book crawl I did, I had such a good time that I'm gonna have to split this into two different parts. But it actually works out really well because that first location I went to, Nick's comic strip, I got some absolutely good books that deserve some more attention on the channel. But mostly the last location me and Ricky went to, which was supposed to be a, just a quick stop, ended up being one of the best finds either of us have ever stumbled upon. It definitely deserves its own video, so keep your eyes open for that in the future. Uh, before I show you the books I got though, um, I wanna talk about Ricky from All Sorts of Words real quickly. 
fellow New Englander. He lives in Maine. I've known him for months now online, never actually met him in person. And the first time I did a live thing with Ricky, I had two thoughts. One, this guy is hilarious. I was absolutely dying laughing. His brand of humor is right up my alley. And the second thing was, wow, he is incredibly intelligent. Um, I could tell immediately and come to find out, no surprise, he is a college professor. He is a novelist. Uh, and I was recently on a live show with some other friends of mine. We were talking about Ricky. And I said, all of us here in the comic book community, we are incredibly lucky that he is a comic book YouTuber because he is smart enough. He could have chose anything to talk about. Uh, he could have talked about, you know, classic literature, movies, film, the humanities. But no, he chose to talk about silly old comic books and all of us are all the more lucky for it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, his institutional knowledge for comic books is ludicrous, especially independent and DC comics. Stuff I've never even heard of. He was showing me books I've never seen before, telling me stories I never knew I needed to know, and it was incredible. And on his YouTube channel, guys, he's doing some really unique, interesting things. I was recently in a discussion about how boring comic book YouTubing is these days. You know, everyone's all doing the same thing. And I pride myself at one point, you know, thinking I was doing something original. But even after a year and a half of this, eh, same old stuff. Ricky is absolutely different. You will watch his channel. It's incredibly refreshing. You've never seen anything like it. And that is why I give him the highest of Lunch Money Comics endorsements. I endorse a lot of YouTubers that I like, guys. Um, Ricky is second to none. I absolutely love his content. Um, that being said, I know my channel is the family friendly channel. A lot of kids watch my channel. As a matter of fact, my friends Josh and Larry recently told me that I was the Mr. Rogers of the comic YouTubing community, which I don't really see it. Just because I come home from a hard day at work, swap my sport jacket for a nice cozy cardigan, put on a nice sturdy pair of house shoes, and snuggle up in my favorite chair with a warm cup of tea, that doesn't make me Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I don't really see it. Where was I? Oh, Ricky, yeah, so my channel is the family-friendly channel. Ricky's channel is for more mature audiences only. I use that word mature very lightly with all of us comic book collectors, but if you want to see something completely original and different that is full of comedy, a little bit of humility, and a whole heaping bowl full of comic book institutional knowledge, look no further than all sorts of words. Oh, also, he's doing a fantastic comic book community building event right now called The Four Seas. It's the Comic Collectors Clash of Champions, where he pits different comic book collectors against each other, kind of like in a uh, WWE wrestling style format. And the best part is not only are they showing off these awesome comic books, but the community gets to vote for every week's winner. It's absolutely awesome. It's really, really funny. And I really hope I get to do it someday. So guys, normally at this point, I say if you want to support my channel, head on down, like, comment, and subscribe. I sincerely hope that after you watch my video, you head on over to all sorts of words and do the same for him. Uh, it's not the comic book content we asked for, but I think it's the comic book content we all need. Oh, hold on one second. Just waiting for Ricky's payment to go through for this endorsement. There it is. Accept funds. All set. Yeah, so all sorts of words is awesome. Go check them out. Uh, anyways, the first book I want to talk about is the one I got at the second location, which is Jeffrey's Antique Co-op Mall in Lunenburg, Massachusetts. Now, I've been to this place several times in the past. It's sort of like an indoor flea market consignment shop. Uh, and yeah, there are lots of comic books, and I've had luck there in the past. The reason why I wanted to go there with Ricky was I wanted to give him a flavor of the places I like to hunt at. And also, the last time I was there, I saw a ton of books that were right up his alley, Independent, DC, and Vampirella, which he loves. Uh, and although Ricky ended up with a big bag of stuff, I only got one comic book, which is great because I'm trying not to spend too much money. And the book I got was this. This is X-Men Deadly Genesis, number one of a six-part series. It's from 2006. Um, and this storyline came out as the 30th anniversary of Giant Size X-Men number one. Now, this is a variant cover. The uh, regular cover I happen to have right here, you see, is in fact an homage to Giant Size X-Men number one, except, you know, they're all zombies <laughs> and skeletons on the front. Also, Deadly Genesis, the title is also the little tag phrase on the front of Giant Size X-Men number one. Now, I love this story because it's the one that really retells what happened in Giant Size X-Men number one and confirms that Professor X is kind of a jerk. So, in Giant Size X-Men number one, the story is not only are we being introduced to a new team of X-Men, they're also having to explain what happened to the old team of X-Men. 
Because remember, when that came out in 1975, the X-Men had been sort of in publishing limbo. Uh, they hadn't had a unique new story in years. They'd been publishing reprints of older stories. So when the new book came out with this new team, they had explained where the old team was. It's explained that they went to this island, which ended up being alive, Krakoa, and they all disappeared. And the only one that made it out was Cyclops. So in Giant Size X-Men, Professor X is recruiting a new team of mutants from all over the world. Uh, they go to Krakoa, they rescue the old team, and using the power of several of those X-Men, including Polaris, they launch the island into space. They save the day, and we have a new era of X-Men starting. Well, Deadly Genesis tells a decidedly different story, or at least a different version of it. Because we find out in this story that the Giant Size X-Men team was not the first team that Professor X recruited to save the original uh, five. Uh, instead, he had recruited a team of Darwin, Petra, Sway, and the third Summers brother, the brother of Havoc and Cyclops, Gabriel Summers, also known as Vulcan, to be the ones to save the day. So they all went to Krakoa, and they were all subsequently wiped out. All of them died. Uh, so Professor X erased the whole memory of that thing happening, recruited the new team, they went and saved the day, blast Krakoa into outer space. However... Vulcan had lived. He absorbed the energies of his fellow mutants, and he was blasted into space with the island. Well, after the events of M-Day, well, he was reawakened with all this extra power, and he decides to go back to Earth to get revenge on Professor X. It's an awesome storyline. I thought it was amazing, uh, especially with a tie-in to my favorite book, Giant Size X-Men Number 1, uh, and I absolutely love this story. Now, this is the original uh, cover, the regular cover, but the one I got at this store was actually this one. This is a variant, and the reason I love this one is because Vulcan himself is right there on the cover. He was a very powerful, big bad guy in the early and mid-2000s for the X-Men. I love the fact he's on the front of this cover, and this book was $5, guys. I already own it, but I can never say no to this book in this great, great cover. So there you go, guys. Uh, Deadly Genesis number one. So the first location we went to was, of course, Nick's Comic Strip in Danvers, Massachusetts. I absolutely love this store for many reasons. One, it is a fantastic comic book and collectible store. Obviously, you saw how many great vintage toys there were, but you heard us talking about it. They are very charitable. Every single year in April, they pick a different charity of choice. They discount all their back issues and a percentage of their profits go to this great cause. Uh, I did a whole video on them last year where their uh, charity was the Lust Garden Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer Research. That just blew me away, guys. This is just what they do. They've been doing it for years, uh, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, when I did that video last year on it, uh, a lot of my family members and friends donated some money to the Lust Garden Foundation, and even some of my viewers. I was incredibly proud to raise some money for this great cause, guys. And uh, it, it just endeared Nick's comic strip and all the guys that work there in my heart forever. So listen, uh, I can't give them a higher endorsement either. If you ever find yourself north of Boston any time of year, but especially in April, definitely stop by if you can, not only to get great deals on their back issues, but of course to be donating some money to a great cause. Can't speak high enough about Nick's comic strip in Danvers, Massachusetts, but of course, uh, I got some pretty awesome comic books as well. So the first comic book that I got at Nick's comic strip, it was a great one. Um, I don't know where it is. Did you hear that? Is it? It is, it's Little Red Caboose. I love this guy. Incorrigible. It looks like he has something. Let's go see. Hey little buddy, what brings you here? You have something for me. It's the comic book I was looking for. Now I can finish my video. Thanks, little buddy. See you around. Say bye, kids. Ah, uh, Little Red Caboose, always up to no good. So yes, the first comic book that I got at Nick's comic strip was the Green Lantern Corps number 201 from 1986. Now listen, I make no secret, I'm primarily a Marvel guy, but when I read DC, I prefer Green Lantern. When I was a kid, um, the first comic books I ever got, someone gave me a big box of them. Most of them were DC and most of those were The Flash. And I loved The Flash until I read Green Lantern. And as an eight-year-old kid reading Green Lantern, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't understand his powers at all. <laughs> um, but I was very intrigued by it. And of course, it was the Hal Jordan uh, Green Lantern I was talking about. But what I loved about all those books was all the weird aliens that were also uh, Green Lanterns. It was kind of like, to me, like Star Wars and comic books 
combined. So I've always had a soft spot in my heart for all these weird, wacky Green Lantern characters, and this is the first appearance of one of the biggest ones of all. Literally, this is the first appearance of Kilowog, who's right there. Uh, he is a Bolivaxian alien who is not only big and strong, he's incredibly smart. I think he's uh, a uh, geneticist. Uh, yeah, and uh, guys, I've always liked him. He's really cool. He was, for those of you who watched the Green Lantern movie, uh, which a lot of people didn't love, uh, he was all, you know, motion capture CG in that, but he was voiced by the awesome Michael Clark Duncan. Really deep voice, perfect choice for Kilowog. Kilowog is the primary, you know, recruiter and uh, trainer of the Green Lanterns. Just a cool character, guys, because I love Green Lantern. It's one of those titles that I always try to collect if it's a big key to add to my collection. Uh, this one here is in beautiful shape. It's a white cover, often shows lots of staining. Uh, this is a sharp copy. Beautiful. I'll tell you how much I paid for it at the end. Obviously, I think you saw I got it for a lot less. Uh, so a fantastic book right there. But there's one more Green Lantern book that I picked up. No point in beating around the bush. You all know exactly what it is. It's this. This is Green Lantern, co-starring Green Arrow, number 87. It's from 1971-72. You know, it was, you know, dated 72, released in 71. Uh, and this is, of course, the first appearance of the Green Lantern, John Stewart. So John Stewart is an amazing character. Um, he was thought up by Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams. Uh, but not only that, a lot of people call this the first appearance of John Stewart. They forget it's the second appearance of Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner was supposed to be the replacement for Hal Jordan. And literally in this comic book, I think he gets hit by a bus. Like, like literally a bus. He gets knocked out of commission. So then they recruit John Stewart, who is a former army veteran. Uh, he's also a really smart architect. And of course, just like all Green Lanterns, he's incredibly brave and fearless. And he is awarded the Green Lantern. Uh, and the reason I love Jon Stewart so much, guys, like I said, I read Green Lantern as a real little kid, but I was mostly into Marvel. And in the 90s, you know, Hal Jordan wasn't even Green Lantern. He was the bad guy, Parallax. Kyle Rayner was the Green Lantern, and I didn't care about him at all. But a little bit later, a little bit later, the cartoon The Justice League came out. You know, it was in the same fashion as Batman, uh, the animated series, and Superman. And the Green Lantern on the Justice League team in that cartoon was, of course... Jon Stewart. I love that cartoon and I thought he was absolutely awesome. I fell in love with him and he is by far my favorite Green Lantern. I've been looking for this book for a while, guys, and here I am finding it. But I said, I said at the beginning of the day, I want to have a good day with Ricky, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I bought some pretty big books. Very recently, I am out of lunch money. However, this book here is incredibly high grade. You saw me go through it. Um, I mean, yes, it's a white cover. There's a little bit of discoloration. But guys, uh, there's a crease down here, but it's white, so it's not color breaking, but it's beautiful. This is a high grade copy over a 7.0 easily. I'm going to give it to Comic Spa to clean and fix it up. I think it might be even like an 8. And here's the killer, guys. It was priced at 200 bucks. $200. I didn't want to spend the money, but I knew I was never going to find this book in this high grade for that price, maybe ever again. Uh, so I was more than happy to put it on the credit card. Uh, but not only that, when I went to go check out, I found out I had $30 off. So listen, this was uh, marked at $200. This is marked at $30. You know, this book in lower grade, you can get for like $20 or $25. I was happy to get a, a better grade. So that $30 off either gave me this for free or I much prefer to say I got this for $170 because the $200 is what kicked me into that coupon. Uh, and again, I got another $20 off just for buying this for the next time I go back to Nick's comic strip. I can't speak highly enough uh, about this character, about this book, and of course, Nick's comic strip. Uh, and my friend Ricky from All Sorts of Words. So that's it, guys. Head on down to the comments and let me know which of my pickups you like the best and do you think I paid a fair price? Uh, and then after you're done commenting, I hope you go over to All Sorts of Words, check out his content, and sub him up. Uh, he definitely paid me pretty good for this endorsement, so make sure he gets his money's worth. Until next time, boys and girls. I'll see you all next week in some strange and unusual places with new comic books for you. Because it's you I like. Oh, okay, I see it now.